Hi, hi. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. <laughs> I gotcha. I just need to see your face when you get in. <laughs> Hi, hon. Do you have sound or no? You're still off. Your sound's off. Hello? You <laughs> You're working um, on <laughs> It says that I'm supposed to be in uh, Cosmo Theory, but the, the title said Esthetician Theory. Is that the same thing? Yes, it is. It's just that I'm teaching it, so it's coming from my room. Oh, okay. 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 So yeah, I know. Otherwise, I'd have to do that and change it on the morning one, and they're like, "Oh yeah, estheticians wouldn't know any better." <laughs> okay. So you're good. I was trying to make sure that the slides work. I was trying to do the slides to set it up for you guys to sh share screens with me today, and I started laughing because the teacher's one was taking forever to download, oh, no. and it's the same thing. <laughs> It just makes it easier when I hit the slip, like hit a button, it'll change the screen. This one has to go in and in and in and in until it changes the screen. <laughs> Slow roll or whatever. To the desk so that way I can see you. Uh, it's like leaning. Do I have to wear do I have to wear my uniform when I'm at home? Because I don't have that many no, options. I would love to just say yeah, but no. <laughs> This is a little joke because that's what I do, but no. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. I just ask that they don't drink. <laughs> I, I, uh, I won't be drinking alcohol. I'm only 19, so. Okay, good. <laughs> no drinks in class. <laughs> yeah. I was joking about that one one day, and they're like, what? And I'm like, I'm just kidding, because we can't have you drinking here at school, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, no drinks. <laughs> Yeah, I just have my water. <laughs> All right. Oh, good. So we're on chapter 11, just for, so that you'll know where we're going to be at. Okay. I don't have any, I didn't get an email for my books yet. You haven't gotten what now? Uh, he was supposed to send me an email that had all my books in it, but I don't think I've gotten it. Check your, your um, email account. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now, but... I just let in. <laughs> Aha, Judith. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't like, there's no links to a book. It doesn't say any. Well, that's weird. Yeah. I will there's ask a, her, did you just start? Yeah, this is my first day. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I woke up message. early because I thought I had school at eight because I thought there were like multiple classes. Oh no. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm going to send him a message. Okay. okay. Let's see uh, what's going on. Yeah. I have like a pivot point lab thing. I don't yeah. know. What that is. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yes. I, I don't know how to click on it though. Oh, okay. It's sending me to something. I have such horrible internet service. It doesn't allow me to do anything. I know that's it's all kind of crazy. Is it letting you in? It's saying that I need a password. Oh, okay, I found the password. Never mind. Okay. So I don't have to send him a message in, right? I'll just sign. No, you don't. I'll just sign okay. in really quick. Okay. Let me get the chat thing up here. I thought that was just like my grading system. So I was like, oh, okay. And then. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this works. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. What they give you? You'll have to yeah. probably download the books. It, it's just bringing me, like, it's giving, it's telling me to make a new password. Yeah, so, so that you'll be able to get online. So give it the password that you want. Okay. No, not that. Okay, so you're going to come in on Thursday. 
Can you bring your computer or your phone or something in so they can show you how to, to get online and do all that stuff? They gave me a tablet, so yeah, I'll, I'll do okay. that. I have to bring it in um, anyways because the the SD card that he gave me doesn't fit into the tablet. The tablet? Okay. Yeah, so um, I have to get that changed. I'm just writing down my password, sorry. Um, okay, sorry. But yeah, so I'll, I'll bring it in no matter what. Okay. I don't know why, uh, okay, we'll just do that. Okay. So, okay. Okay, so it says uh, featured content, uh, Zoom links, webinars, um, session tracking. Session tracking. Right. We're going to need um, Lena. Okay, we're going to need um, your actual textbook or your, your textbook. Can you get pull that up? I'm looking for the textbook. Is it like a link? It should be you download the book, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Oh, can I download this as an app, like the Pivot Point Lab thing? Um, I'm not sure. Um, Judith, are you there? Judith. Hi, hon. Hi. Do you guys have, do you, are you a, um, an ROP, hon? Are you both ROPs? What's that? Are you a pivot point student? Are you Wait, me? Yeah, Judith. Oh, um, Cosmo. I know, but I are you get, uh, in high school or no? Student. You're a floor student. Okay. No. And um, are yeah. you a floor student or a high school student? I'm a college student. Okay, so you're not going through the high school. No, I'm not in high school. So you're in the pivot point program. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a pivot point AR. I don't know if that's the same one. And I'm not sure either. Um, Judith, do you know how you downloaded your books? Do you know? No, you have to look at me. Hey, do you know how to download? Are you driving? Judith, you're driving. Okay, how about Lena? Are you a, an ROP or a pivot point student? You're who? <laughs> I don't have your own. Okay, I'm looking for somebody that's a pivot point student. Hi, you're a pivot point student, right? <laughs> well, the um the code is wrong that they sent us. I just had to call in right now and is get the correct wrong? code. So if people aren't in, it's probably because they have the wrong code. Did he put up the wrong one? Yes. Oh shoot. I didn't need to put in a passcode. It just sent me here. So no, not okay. a password. The the um the code, the, the 708 805 5868 that's not right. Yeah, that's that's, it's, yeah. that's where you are. Yeah. Well, that's that is, not what um, I just. That's when not I what tried I just, to copy and paste the um the link or the numbers, I mean, um, it wasn't working. So I ended up clicking join in the arrow, and it just had it from like the past time that I had joined. Yeah, so I just called the, the school, switched. and they gave me a completely different code. They so did? that's how I got in. I didn't get in with eight oh five five six. I mean five eight. You get in with six eight. Um, eight oh five five six eight six. Oh, that's the one I have. Yeah, the one that's on this text message says 5868. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if he. I'm like, did you send um, the wrong code? Okay. Oh, and I do have the book downloaded. You do? Okay, hold oh. on one second, okay? What, what chapter are we on? 11. 11. Is there a way I can just get to 11 without having to press the forward button a thousand times? <laughs> um, you should be able to go to 11. Hold on one second, okay? 
Okay. I got to get these people into the classroom first. Okay, Alexis, Jasmine. Shay, sorry you guys, I'm trying to get you in as fast as I can. I'm trying to get you in. <laughs> Haley. Let's see. Okay. Anybody else in here? Alexis. I got her. Okay. Did you get Haley? Haley. Okay. I'm going to go through all the people that I have here. Okay, I got one more. Wait a minute. Isabella. That I've got, like, I checked everyone. And Cynthia, okay. Saida? I you got you, hon. Okay. Okay, thanks, though. So. Okay. Um, I have a new student that's trying to well, get to her books. Okay, I, and I'm not I really... it's on the books. Like it says 1.1 is respect, 1.1 sculpture. Like it has that. Okay, but... you need 11.1. Okay, I'll just have to keep pressing the little small button until yeah. I get to 11. It might be like on page four or five. I'm not sure. No, okay. you got me to no. two. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> N A D I A A. Okay. I'm trying to catch as quickly as possible all the people that are coming in. <laughs> okay, who's queen? <laughs> all right, who's queen? <laughs> Is that your real name? <laughs> All right, are you still in the room, Queen? They left. Okay. C A N I S H. She's still in the room, too. What the heck? Huh? <laughs> oh, I found it. Oh, good. Wigs and hair pieces? Mm hmm that's okay. what we're doing. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It's like Tuesday. I just wanna make sure I've got everybody, um, like everyone in here. Valerie. Okay. So I'm gonna wait a couple seconds here and then I'm gonna, um, Hold on, I'm getting to you. If you're trying to get in the room, just hang up with me. <laughs> okay. All right. Lauren. Okay, I'm just trying to take roll and get everyone in here at the same time. <laughs> so bear with me. We're on chapter 11, 11.1. .1, and it should be, forgive me if I'm off on pages, but I'm going to give you what I have. It should be on page 383, 386, and 387, where I'm going to be starting. Is it different for any of you? It's got like smart notes. A video. Okay, but you can watch the video after the class because I've tried to hook it up. I can't get my sound to work. I'm mm -hmm. going to go through um, the smart notes, like what your what basically needs to go in there as far as your lecture. Okay. okay. So I can click on that and read it while you're talking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, okay. am I in the wrong class? Yes, you are, Junior. Deuces. Bye bye. Hi, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the wrong one. Okay. Is everybody else in the right one? Samantha. Okay. 
Uh, I'm Vanisha. Am I in the right class? Are you um, a barber or cosmetologist? Cosmetologist. You're in the right one. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. It's my All first right. day. So. It's your first day? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think I've got everybody in here. Hopefully. We'll give her like a couple more minutes and then I can start. For those of you that are already on, we're on chapter 11, which is wigs and hair pieces. Okay. Okay, those of you that like are ROP, you'll have to just take notes. Um, the pivot point, I'm actually, I kind of go with the flow of your study guide. Okay, just an FYI, if you're trying to keep up with me. So I go through, basically those are your main points of the lecture. You wanna have those things filled out completely correctly because if you needed to do a shorter version of your textbook, that's it, <laughs> okay? Apparently my pages are off a little bit because I have an older version of, the, of your book, but it still covers the same information. So it's on my study guide, it's on page 303. So if yours is different, please let me know, okay? So on 303 of the study guide and 383 on the text. All right, looks like we got everyone in here. So what I'm gonna do is just call roll so I can make sure everyone's got credit for this, okay? And Thea, you were my first one in here. Okay, Judith, say hell. hello. <laughs> hello. Okay. Lena. Lena. Okay, can you give you credit if you don't say hello, okay? <laughs> or I'm here. I had it on mute. What? I think I had it on mute. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you Lena? Yes. Okay, you're here. Christian. Here. Okay, good. Alexis. Here. Okay, good. Jasmine. Here. Good. All right. Shay. Elizabeth. Here. Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, Elizabeth. Here. Okay, Haley. Here. Okay. Sierra or Sierra, S A I R A. Yeah. Okay. Isabella. Here. Okay. Um, Nadia. Here. Okay, good. All right. I don't know who Queen is. Did they finally leave or did they come back in? They leave? That's Renee. She's a barber. Oh, okay. So she was in the wrong class. Okay. Venetia? Did I say yeah. that right? Okay. Valerie? I'm here. Okay. Lauren? Here. Okay. Samantha? Here. Trace? Yeah, I see you right there. <laughs> okay, is there anyone that I did not call? I don't know if you called my name. Yes, I did. Okay. You're the first one I called. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Did call Natalie. Okay. <laughs> what, did somebody else say something? Oh, you didn't call Natalie. Natalie? Yeah. All right. And who else did I not call? Anyone else? Max, you didn't call me. Okay, Max. Yes, ma'am. All right, gotcha. Okay, anyone else? Okay, just an FYI, I just need you guys to stay on, on like near the, the screen so that I can see you because I have to give you credit when I see you. Okay. I know nobody likes to be on the screen, but. No, I've just been reading a lot of information about the LGBT community and tech. I'm what was that? I'm sorry, I accidentally unmuted myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I just put somebody else in here, but I don't know if they're in the right room. This is the Cosmo class, so I just let somebody in. 
Their name was A L C T E L. No? Okay. Just want to make sure everybody gets credit for this. All right. So we're going to start on wigs and hair pieces today. Okay. We're just going to take a quick look, make sure everybody's here. And then I'm going to change the screens. Okay. All right. Let me get your other screen up here. All right. And I'll try to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, do you guys still have the screen now? It's loading. Loading. Okay, good. Just let me know if you got it when you guys get it out. I can see it. Okay, everybody can see this now? So it's yes. basically giving us, giving us what the chapter is going to be about. It's talking about the history, the composition, colors, and construction of the hair, the wig and hair piece essentials, infection control and safety, client consultation, and wig services and hair pieces. So who in here got to make a wig recently or at some point? <laughs> Did you have fun? I understand there was another one on there, I guess today or something like that, that Miss Sue gave you. And they were like, we did that for Miss Connie. So whatever that homework assignment is, you'll have to end up doing that today. Okay, just an FYI. Oops, go back here. Okay. All right, following this lesson, you'll be able to explain why clients wear wigs and hair pieces and list the professional wig services performed in the salon. Okay. Moving on to this slide, there we go. Wigs and hair pieces. So wigs were designed to cover the entire head and hair pieces were designed to cover specific areas of the head. So there's a difference between the two, okay? And there is a test question that asks just that. Wigs cover the entire head and the hair pieces are only certain parts of the head. Okay. All right. The history of wigs, okay. They've been worn by men and women for both aesthetic and practical reasons. What? Okay. <laughs> All right. How they have risen and fallen in popularity according to the trends, the fashions, and even politics. Who's talking? You might want to, to um, shut your mic off. <laughs> All right. The majority of our clients who seek wig services do so because they are experiencing hereditary hair loss or hair loss due to illness, say like cancer, or going through radiation treatments, things like that. So it's something that you have to take compassion with a client. Okay, you don't want to make them feel very badly about that, but you want to help them out. So then you go through your composition, your colors and construction. Okay, if you're studying from your study guide with me, okay, you have these three boxes on your, um, your study guide on that page. Okay, so it says wig composition. These wigs and hair pieces can be made of human hair, animal hair, synthetic fibers, or a blend of each. So underneath that composition, you can write in there, human hair, animal hair, synthetic fibers, or it's a blend, okay? So I'm helping you out with your little study guide there, all right? Human hair wigs are made mostly of Asian, Indian, or European hair, and they are the most expensive wigs, with European being the most costly, okay? Your wig composition, okay? It's known as a mod acrylic fiber. It's made from your petroleum products and it's produced in long threads, which are rolled into spools. How many of you have had to, actually had a, your doll head so far that has a doll head, okay? And on that doll head, sometimes where there's hair coming out of there, you might find those little fibers. They look like a gray thread or a red thread or a blue thread sometimes. Okay, those are the extra little threads that they're talking about. Okay, that come in there. I don't know how they get in there, but they're actually attached to the scalp and it's supposed to look like hair, but it isn't. 
Okay. Under animal hair, though, they're most often made from yak, angora, horse, or sheep hair. It's used most often to produce fantasy hair pieces or theatrical wigs or the display of mannequin wigs. Okay. Let's see if I'm gonna get this. Okay. On the human hair, okay, to determine whether a hair piece is made of human hair or mod acrylic hair, which is synthetic, you're gonna pull out several strands and hold them over a match flame, okay? That human hair, when it's burning, it'll burn slowly and produce an odor. Where the synthetic ball, the synthetic fiber is actually gonna ball up on the end of it. It kind of like melts the end of that hair piece and then it extinguishes itself and it doesn't produce any odor. Everybody has smelled the hair, burnt hair before, right? It's a nasty little smell. Okay, your wig colors. Now this is that second block on your study guide, okay? Every wig and hairpiece company follow the same standard. They have what's known as a J and L ring. It's a color ring that's used by the wigs and hairpiece manufacturers that contains a number of samples from black to pastel blonde. So everyone kind of follows in along in the same category so that we all are choosing the same type of hair, the same color of hair. They use them for a variety of reasons. It could be just special effects. It could be, you know, that's the hair color that she naturally is, but they use the J and L ring. And that is actually a test question, okay? Where do they put the colors from? And it's called a J and L ring. Okay. All right, your wig construction. And this goes into the third box on your study guide, okay? Cap wigs, these are elastic mesh fiber base to which the hair fiber is now attached to. And the capless wigs are rows of hair wefts sewn to strips of elastic. Okay, so in that construction box right there, you're just gonna put in their cap wigs and capless wigs. Okay, so that you know the difference between the two. Okay. So hair and or synthetic fibers may be attached to a wig cap or a base in one of the three methods. They can be hand tied, they can be machine made, or they can be semi hand tied. Okay. All right. All right. Oops. Sorry, there we go. Okay, these are your hand tides. Okay, they're produced by hand tying the strands of hair into the mesh, the fine mesh um, foundation. They are going to simulate the natural growth patterns and create a natural look. Okay, they duplicate density of a fairly thick head of hair or human hair, and they tend to be the most expensive. So they're gonna go in at a certain angle because like our own hair, it goes in at a certain angle. Okay, if you have a cowlick, you'll notice that they go into a different angle as they come out. That's why they're sticking up sometimes. Okay, machine made, okay, these consist of the hair fibers sewn into long strips that we call wefts, okay? Then they're sewn to the cap of the wig in a circular or crisscross pattern. They can be difficult to design since the direction of hair is determined by the position the weft is sewn in the cap. So depending on how they sew that in there, it might be hard to change, I guess, the direction of the hair growing or coming out of the hair. Kind of like if you set the hair on the wrong, in the wrong way, it won't go the way you want it to go. So that's the only reason they're talking about it is the hair is actually going in the wrong direction. So it might be difficult to work with. Okay. There we, oops, here we go. Okay, semi hand tied. Okay, this is a combination of hand tied and mach machine made. These are best like toupees, which are semi hand tied to create that sturdy or natural looking. These are gonna be reasonably priced hair replacements. Has anybody ever seen or know somebody that had hair replacement done? Where's a toupee? No? Not one person, huh? <laughs> All right, well, my uncle had one when they first came out very many, 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 many years ago. Okay, and they had actually taken the hair off of his legs, so they took sections of the skin down by his ankle and they used that hair to place it up on top of his head. 
so weird. So it's kind of kind of curly. <laughs> it wasn't the other type of hair, but it was the leg hair that was kind of curly. All right, going back to your wig construction again. Okay, when you're helping a client select a wig, so we're gonna look for the construction to determine the best value in the client's price range. Can she afford a more expensive wig? Consider capless wigs or caps that allow the scalp to breathe. That they're a little bit more comfortable than the ones that don't allow it to breathe. And people won't wear them if they're not comfortable. You're also gonna select a wig with a flesh color. So the sections provide a realistic look when you try to part the hair. Am I going too fast for you guys? Lena, you look like you're lost. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm trying to catch up. It's my first class, so I was figuring out how to put the notes in and everything still. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so far we've really only put in like the composition and the colors and construction. Do you have that part put in? I don't. Okay, under your composition for that first block under structure, do you see that? Yes. Okay, you're gonna put in there human hair, animal hair, synthetic fibers, or blends. It's basically asking you what type of hair do we use, okay? okay. So you got human hair, animal hair, and synthetic fibers, or a blend. Okay. I got that. Okay. Under the colors, you're going to put down the J and L ring, because that's what it's called, and there are 70 colors. Okay. You so said how many colors? Can be used. Huh? I'm sorry. J and L ring and how many colors? 70. Seven zero. Okay. All right, and then in the construction box, you're just gonna put cap wigs and capless wigs. Okay, everybody stand with me. I'm sorry if I'm going so fast. I'll, I'll go slower so I can put, help you put that stuff in. Okay, you got like four or five lines right underneath the box, okay? And what they're wanting you to put in there is how to tell the difference between a human hair and synthetic wigs. Okay, so what you're going to write in there is a human hair will burn slowly and produce an odor. Okay, human it's, hair will burn slowly and produce an odor. Are we supposed to be putting this on, on the on the actual like website where it has the book, like for our study guide, or writing yes, it down? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, it's not, it's not letting type on the website. I've just been writing it down on my notebook. Okay, then you can do it that way. That's not a problem. You could probably go back and put it, fill it in. Do you have um, an iPhone or a, or? A, um... Yeah. I... Okay, so the iPhone has to be downloaded a little bit differently. That's why you're not being able to put that information in there as we're speaking. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna let you know that, okay? Okay. Um, when you come in, when you come in on Thursday, bring your computer or whatever you're using and ask Miss Connie to show you how to download that, okay? Okay. Okay. So just keep your notes with you and then you can fill it in afterwards, okay? Mm hmm All right. So did everyone get that human hair burns slowly and produces an odor? Yes. Okay, and your synthetic hair now, it's gonna ball up on the end of it, like it melts it, okay? And it doesn't have an odor. So it kind of extinguishes itself pretty quickly. Okay. So then it goes down to mod acrylic fibers. Am I right? And what you want to write in there is that they're synthetic and they're made from petroleum products. Okay, that's a test question. They try to make it as, as close to hair as possible, but it's not, <laughs> it just isn't. Can you repeat that they're synthetic and made from what? Petroleum products. Okay. All right, then it goes down to wig construction, am I right? Yes. And it basically goes, goes through capless, 
the capoids, capless, and webs, right? So let's just put something in where it says cap wigs, okay? And you're going to write in there, it consists of elastic mesh fiber base. It consists of an elastic mesh fiber base. Okay, to which the fiber is attached. And these are like, these are handmade, okay? So it consists of an elastic mesh fiber base to which fiber is attached. These are mostly handmade, okay? Can I move on to the next one yet? Are you still writing? Let me know, okay? Okay, your capless wigs now, they consist of rows of hair wefts. Okay, rows of hair wefts sewn to strips of elastic. Rows of what? Rows of hair wefts sewn to strips of elastic. These are the kind that are actually more comfortable to wear. They're breathable. <laughs> They're sewn to, how do you spell it? For which one? The rows wefts. of wefts, yeah. yeah. Hair wefts, and it's W-E-F-T-S. Yes, and then they're sewn to what? Strips of elastic. Elastic, okay. Okay, now your wefts, which is the next part of this, they are machine made, and these are hair fibers sewn into strips. Hair fibers sewn into strips. Hair fibers into? Hair fibers sewn into strips. Okay. So is everybody up to where I'm at right now? Right? Yeah. So Basically, they're going into how to help the client select a wig now and to determine if she's going to be using a cap, capless, depending on that, and the color, right? That's basically where we're at. So if you turn your study guide page over to 304, okay, and it should have wig services at the top. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So what you're gonna put in there is the client's comfort is just as important as the way it looks because if it's not comfortable, they're not gonna wear the wig. So the client's comfort is as important as the way it looks, the wig itself. I'm gonna turn this page. Yeah, come back. All right. Okay, we're just gonna stop here just for a second. I'm gonna read this. This is not what you're gonna put in your book just yet, okay? So it's asking you, these are the essentials that we need to know. Delivering the professional wig services requires an organized selection of products, implements, and equipment. Basically meaning brushes, you know, clips, whatever we need, right? And also says to refer to the material safety data sheet, which is known as the MSDS, but in the newer textbook, it's called the safety data sheet. Okay, SDS, but it's the same thing depending on which book you're in. And it basically gives you the information on all the chemical products that we use, okay? So if we're using something that's got a chemical in it, we have to have that safety data sheet for it, all right? It basically will tell us um, combustion levels, how to store it, um, you know, exposure time, all of that. That's what that safety data sheet is for, okay? Um, infection control and safety, 
Okay, they want you to disinfect all of your tools and implements properly. Okay, basically these are just notes right here, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to fill this in your book yet. Okay, you're gonna disinfect all your tools and implements properly. You're going to explain the points of maintenance and hygiene specific to this service to that client. Okay, you wanna ensure that the wig or the hairpiece has sufficient airflow if it'll be worn for long periods of time or short periods of time. You wanna work with the products in a well-ventilated area. Okay, you wanna be able to breathe through this stuff. <laughs> Observe carefully the direction in which the client's hair naturally grow grows. And then teach the clients how to maintain and care for the, any hair additions services. Okay, they wanna be able to work with it when they get home. All right. So what we're gonna do is go through this consultation and then I'm gonna go back through where it says wig measurement and fitting. Is that not what your next part of the book is saying? Yeah, okay. So let's get through this and then I'll go through the fitting guidelines, okay? All right, there's several things to keep in mind when you're communicating with a client for a wig or a toupee or a hair addition. You wanna make sure that that client feels comfortable and safe, okay? Because you wanna get their feedback. The communication is really important, right? Be especially sympathetic and emotionally supportive Okay, they're coming to you because they're, you know, upset and nervous and all kinds of things, emotions are going through them because they don't have any hair. Think about how you would feel if you didn't have any hair on your head. All right, you're going to serve your client with dignity, respect, and a positive, supportive attitude because that's how you would want to be treated if you were going to be fitted for them. All right, it says the wig measurement and fitting guidelines, right? Okay, so it says brush the client's hair smoothly and measure. All right, so on the fitting guidelines, right next to where it says fitting guidelines, you're going to write, brush the client's hair back, and if it's long, pin it up, okay? So that's your first part. Before you get to number one where it says circumference, okay? It's brush the client's hair, and if it's long, pin it up. Okay, where it says circumference of the head, okay? You're going to write in there, you're going to begin at the hairline in the middle of the forehead. So you're gonna start right here, okay? You're gonna take that measurement from here and you're gonna encircle the entire head and run that tape measure back, but it's going to go above the ears and return to its starting area. So it's begin at the hairline, which is right here, okay? in the middle of the forehead, circle the head just above the ears. Okay, so that circumference of the head and then the distance of the hairline from the center of the forehead over the crown to the nape hairline. Just, I just want you to write in there the circumference beginning where I just told you. Okay, so you're gonna write in there, begin at the hairline, circle the entire head just above the ears. Okay. That is your first measurement. Okay. All right. The second one, which says forehead to nape, this one is going to be the center of the forehead where we started before, over the crown to the nape. Okay, so this one's center of the forehead over the crown to the nape. And you can actually have the client bend their head back so that you can find that spot back here, okay? That's your second one, forehead to nape. Everybody got that in there? All right, your third measurement now is going to be temple to temple. And you're going to measure from the temple to temple just above the ears over the crown of the head. Okay, so temple to temple is measuring from temple to temple just above the ears over the crown of the head.
take up in different orders here. <laughs> I'm sorry, my doctor's office just called, so I did not get one or two. Can you please repeat that? I yes. will call them back. Okay. Can you see me on the screen? Okay, your circumference means that you're going to begin at the hairline in the middle of the forehead, okay? And you're gonna circle the entire head just above the ears, okay? And go back to your starting point. So it's basically like this, like that first picture on the left. Okay, hold on one second. You said begin at the hairline in the middle of forehead, and then what else? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're going to circle the entire head just above the ears. Do you see the very first picture on the left-hand side? Yes. That's basically that first measurement. That's the okay. circumference. Okay. Okay. And then the forehead to nape. And then forehead to nape is center of the forehead, back, you know, right here. Mm -hmm. All right. And you're going to go over the crown to the nape. That's the next one. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the third one is temple to temple, and you're going to go yeah, I got that one. That's over where the temple I above the ears. Okay, so number four now is gonna be ear to ear. And this is just above the ear over the occipital bone. So that's the fourth picture here. Okay, so that's what should be- How do you spell about. that over the what bone? Over the occipital? Okay, it's O-C-C-I-P-I-T-A-L. And your occipital is that bone that sticks out like right above the nape of your neck or your head, I'm sorry, like the very back bone. Okay, that's the bone they're talking about. It's basically like where your weight line is in your hair. Okay, so has everybody got all four of those, the fitting guidelines? Okay, so I'm gonna turn this. This is going to be putting on the wig. <laughs> Okay, now I will actually read to you what I, you should put in your book, okay, even though I'm reading from the screen. All right, it's putting on the wig guidelines, all right, and it basically says brush the client's hair back from the face and up from the back hairline. You're going to cover the client's hair with a fine net or wig cap, Then you're going to place the front hairline of the wig over and slightly lower than the client's front hairline. Are we supposed to be writing this down? Because no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay. I'm just reading it for you. <laughs> it's okay. I know it's fast, huh? Adjust and form the wig perimeter to better fit the client's head shape. What I was asking you to do is just follow along in the pictures as I read, okay? And I'll go back and help you fill in what you should write, okay? Okay, so in your text, your book, on your study guide, it says putting on the wig and it says first, right? Okay, you're gonna brush the hair up from the face and the hairline. So that's what you should write in your, your book. Brush the client's hair back and from the face and up the hairline. Okay. You're gonna pin it to secure it, okay? Number two is going to be to cover that client's head or hair with a fine net or wig cap. You are going to put that one in there, okay? And that's basically where those pictures start, right? Okay, so the second one, or excuse me, the third one says, place front hairline of the wig over and lower than the client's hairline, front hairline, okay? That's pretty much picture two and three. <laughs> and you're gonna hold that position, basically. You see how her fingers on the second picture is holding it while they put the, the back of it on? Okay, and the next picture. All right, and the fourth, all you have to write in there is to adjust the wig. Okay, adjust the, the form of the perimeter. So it's adjusting the wig. So you don't have to write a bunch of stuff inside there. You just have to get the main points in there. So the first one would have been brush the client's hair back and up from the face and hairline. Okay, the second one was cover 
the client's head with that fine net or wig cap. The third one is to place the front hairline of the wig over and lower than the client's hairline. And the fourth one would be to adjust. Is everybody with me on that one? You all ready to continue? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. If you don't say anything, I'll just keep going, all right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna turn the page, all right? And then we're gonna get into wig blocking and that should be the next part of your, your um, study guide. But let me read this first, okay? Blocking basically means the proper sizing procedures that help maintain the wig's original shape, okay? Because if we don't do it correctly, that it can actually shrink itself up or stretch itself out. So the wig blocks are the canvas covered wig forms that are manufactured for use during the blocking services. Okay. Have you ever seen one of these? It is like a material. Okay. And it does have the little stitching on there. All right. These are guidelines. Okay. So the wig blocking guidelines, and you can start this as the first like little bullet that you have on your, your study guide is to select the correct size canvas block. Okay. That is going to go into your book. Just an FYI, there are six different sizes, okay? Because they may ask that question later on. There's six different sizes. Okay, and you see the very first picture now? Okay, it says cover the block with the clear plastic and secure plastic tightly with the wig pins. That's number two, the second bullet in your book. Okay, and it actually looks like that first picture. So it says cover the block with clear plastic and secure plastic tightly with wig pins. Okay, and then your third bullet right there, it just says place the wig on the block and secure the wig pins. What I want you to look at though is the second and third picture, okay? Look at where the T-pins are at, okay? The pins are where it's going to be securing is the middle of the hairline in the front, okay? The two sides where the temples are, and then there's three in the back. So it's the two back corners and the middle of the hairline in the back. Do you see that? That is actually how you're supposed to pin the wig to the block. Okay, does everyone see those little pins? Yes. Okay, good. So basically what they're telling you is center front, both temples, center of the nape, and the two corners of the nape, right? Okay. Has everyone filled in their little bullets? So one, two, and three there? because they are exactly the same. Okay, I'm gonna flip the page here. All right, this is where we're gonna customize or we're gonna fit that wig, okay? Now a dart is gonna be alterations made vertically to remove width in the nape. That's a test question. Okay, so you're going to put right next to dart in your book on 305. It says they're made vertically to remove width in the nape. And you do this from ear to ear, just an FYI, okay? Okay, now a tuck, these are alterations that are made horizontally to shorten the wig from the front to the nape. Okay, and that would be your second picture right here. And the way I could remember this, I know this sounds really crazy. I'll get you, Christian. <laughs> the way that, um, I'm gonna have to shut this off here for a second, just to let him in. Hang on, guys. Okay. I have to let him in somewhere. I don't know where he went. Where'd he go? Christian, where'd you go? Okay, I don't know where he went. Sorry, guys. I was trying to let him in, but he took off. <laughs> okay. 
you can't hear anything. Um, Al Kate, I trying to pronounce your name. A L C A T E L. Hi, it's me, Cecilia. Hi. I couldn't find my laptop charger, and I'm redoing my hair a different color. But it's me. I, I figured it out. Okay, you can hear me now. Thank you. Okay, yes. no problem. Okay, Cecilia, let me put that down so I know that who you are. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to turn it back off now. What the sound? Yeah. You don't want to hear me? <laughs> no, I can hear you. I just don't want to hear myself. Okay, then you're going to hit the mute button. Okay. Found it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me go back to this really quick so we can finish this up. All right. So I'm going to share the screen again. Okay. All right. So again, for your dart and your tuck, on page 305, your dart's going to be made vertically to remove width in the nape area. Okay, and that's taken from ear to ear. A tuck is made horizontally to shorten the wig from the front to the nape. Now I was going to say that the only way I remember this is that tummy tuck is always going to be horizontally. <laughs> so if you can remember that part, <laughs> I'm like, I want a tummy tuck, so it's going to be horizontally. <laughs> that's how you remember those. <laughs> Silly, but it's true. <laughs> I gotta think of crazy things to wait, ways to remember this stuff. I'm not kidding. I can't just remember all this stuff in the back of my head. That's a lot of information. Okay, let's get this to move the screen here. Come on. There we go. Okay, shrinking or stretching the cap wings. Okay, these are your guidelines. Okay, in your textbook, it just says stretching and shrinking in those two little blocks. Okay. And basically what they're gonna ask you to write underneath the block is when you're stretching it, you're gonna go one size larger on the block. That's all you have to write in there, one size larger. And in the shrinking, it's one block smaller, okay? Underneath that. Okay, those of you that are taking notes, this is basically what they're one talking about. One block smaller or one size smaller? The stretching one's gonna be a larger block and then the shrinking is gonna be a smaller block. That's all they're asking you to put in there. But I am gonna explain it, okay? So what you would be doing for both of these, okay, is you're going to turn the wig inside out and moisten the cap of the wig by spraying with hot water on the inside of it, okay? Then you're going to turn it right side out and then stretch it, the wig over the block, which is one size larger, right? You're gonna secure that wig to the, to the block using those wig pins. Center the forehead, right? two temples, center of the back and the two corners. And then you're going to allow it to dry, okay? That's basically going to be stretching it, okay? That's why on your book, it just says one, use a block one size larger, okay? Now, when you're shrinking it, you're gonna be doing just the opposite. You are still gonna turn it inside out, okay? You're gonna get the cap wet with some hot water and you're gonna spray it, okay? And then you're gonna turn it right side out. <laughs> And you're also going to pin it to the, the block, okay? So if you need for me to leave this up on the screen so that you can write the notes, you can. I will leave it up there for a second. So basically you're just dampening that, that wig, the size of the block that you, uh, you chose. Uh -oh, my internet's coming up unstable. So if I, I lose you, I'll come back. <laughs> All right. This is going to be shrinking and it's basically doing the exact same thing. Only now we're gonna be putting it on a smaller block. Now this one says dry the wig under a warm dryer, but you know what, you gotta be really careful with those, okay? You really don't wanna put them under there where it gets too warm underneath that dryer because you don't wanna melt anything. Okay. You're freezing. You still might have to adjust the wig if it's too smooth. You're freezing and going mute in and out. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it just said my internet was bad, so I'm sorry. Okay, so you understand what stretching it, making it larger means, right? Okay, if you're trying to shrink the, the cap, okay, sometimes these guidelines won't work. So what you'll have to do is go back and do a tart, a tart, okay, 
okay, and since it's too large. So the difference between the two, okay, is the shrinking one, you might have to go back and do a dart and a tuck, but the stretching one is perfectly fine. A little bit of warm water, okay, on the inside of the wig and stretch it over a larger block. Did you hear all that one this, this time? Kind of, it's in and out. You cut off. Kind of? Okay. okay. All right, I'm trying to, to get through it. <laughs> Surely don't log me off real quick. All right. I'm gonna go back to the stretching so that you can see the, the steps for it. Okay. Stretching that wig, you're gonna moisten it from the inside. Okay. Okay, with warm water or hot, and stretch it over a wig block that's one size larger. Okay, because we're trying to make it larger. And then you're gonna secure it to the wig block with the T-pins, okay? And then you allow that wig to dry, okay? Kind of like when you're trying to stretch out new shoes, you know, you get them a little wet, and then you put that little shoehorn in there, to, you know, right, to make it a little bit larger. Okay, and on when we're trying to shrink it, Okay, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. Okay, we're going to turn that wig inside out, spray it with that hot water. You're going to put it on top of a wig block that's one size smaller now. Okay, and let it dry. Now, if it's still too large, you might have to do a dart and a tuck, which means this is like a hand sew on that. Okay, the dart is going to be vertically and the tuck is going to be horizontally. Okay. Did that one kind of go through? So has everyone got those written down? Yes. Okay. Was that easier to remember at least? <laughs> I know when I used to give these notes to like state board class, I would tell them you had to write each step down. I'm like, in actuality, it's the same thing, only you're just gonna put it on a smaller block or a larger block, that's all, okay? All right, so here's your shrinking, the same thing that we just said, okay? And where it says dry the wig under a warm driver, dryer, I, like, be very careful with that, okay? That's all I can give you as far as being in the field. You don't wanna put it under a very hot dryer where it says adjust the wig if it's still too big, that means a dart or a tuck, okay? I'll leave that up there just for a minute, okay? You still need that up there, ladies? Okay, Yes. here we go. So you want me to go back? Uh, yeah? Yes, please. Okay. Here's your, here's your Okay, I'm done. Okay, good. All right. My internet's going crazy again. It's so cracking. Hang in there with me. I know. Is it stable yet? Yeah. Okay. So this next part is going to be cleaning and conditioning. And it's literally in your study guide. It's underneath the differences. Okay. And it says human hair and synthetic hair, correct? Yes. What they're talking about is the cleaning and conditioning, okay? All right, so under, we have two little blocks, okay? Human hair wigs or hair pieces, okay? And how dirty they get. So that's what I, what I want you to put in there. They need to be cleaned every two to four weeks and you're also going to add one other thing to that, okay? They need to be conditioned after each cleaning. 
okay? Human hair is cleaned every two to four weeks and it has to be conditioned every single time you clean it. Okay, and under your synthetic hair, okay, they can be clean every six to 12 weeks since those fibers aren't as you're, you're cutting hair. out bad. Okay. I can't, we can't hear what you're saying. But they don't require any conditioning. Okay. I did, we didn't hear you. Well, I didn't hear you. Okay. Okay. Did you get the hear? Okay, so underneath your human hair, okay, in your books, what I want you to write in there is cleaned every two to four weeks and conditioned after every cleaning. Okay. Did you get that in, hun? Yes, I couldn't hear you on synthetic hair, just six to 12 weeks. Okay, that's okay. that's okay. Okay, I'm going to go over that now. So yeah. synthetic wigs have to be cleaned every six to 12 weeks, but they don't require conditioning. But just keep this, when they talk about synthetic being cleaned, okay, they're talking about a specific chemical that cleans it. And I, what best way I can describe it is, um, I would tell the students, it's like a cleaning solvent that you get at the dry cleaners, but it's not, okay? <laughs> it's something similar to that. I just wanted to give you a heads up on it. So it's an actual chemical that they use. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because when we went through chemistry, they asked certain questions about these wigs on what product to be. <laughs> So you've got synthetic at six to 12 weeks with no conditioning, okay? And we'll pick this up tomorrow. All right, are there any questions, comments, concerns? No. Any oh, Miss Janie, <laughs> when is our wig due? You just kind of want to go. Huh? <laughs> what? When is our wig due? Okay. So if you, when is your wig due? Um, I don't know. Do you have a date on there? Do, do you have to bring them back on Thursdays? That's what I'm asking. I don't know. I know I'm breaking. Um, didn't they say that we were just supposed to send in a picture um, either Tuesday or Wednesday because it was considered a theory? There you go. Okay. So okay. You, you thank you. Of your, of your, you're welcome. I know you guys want to leave. I'll see you tomorrow at one. Okay. 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 Bye bye, you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Have a good day. <laughs> you too, hon. <laughs>